This is part six of our study entitled, But Who Do You Say That I Am? And in this study, we've been looking at the revelation of who Messiah Yahusha is through Hebrew eyes of understanding of what scripture is telling us. And as we learn to look at scripture through Hebrew eyes of understanding, we began to cast off religious doctrines and the traditions of man so as to grow in the true knowledge of the word of the Most High, whose name in Hebrew is Yahuwah. Now, the ability to grow in the true knowledge of the word of Yahuwah is only possible because of the perfect sacrifice and perfect provision made for us through our Messiah, Yahusha, and we shall forever bless his name. Now, although this has been a rather comprehensive study, it's not by any means exhaustive. And I do pray that it does encourage continued study because it's really very important to understand who Messiah Yahusha is in truth. In fact, this understanding is basic and fundamental to our belief. Now, as we move toward concluding our study, and in this section of our study, I will continue to share what our Father Yahuwah has given to me to share by means of our Lord, our Master, Messiah Yahusha, which brings to mind something that our Father showed me early on when he brought me into the fold. I'm going to share this with you as I understood it at the time. Yahusha, who some call Jesus, is the bridge. He is the bridge over troubled waters and the only way to the Father. Mankind was in an impossible situation to save ourselves. And my life bears testimony of this truth. Now, just imagine this picture without the bridge. Now imagine that without us being able to earn the bridge, the only one who is able to build the bridge does so. And now we're able to receive the delivery of the sustenance of life from he who built the bridge. It's this delivery of the sustenance of life which changes us and makes us like the bridge to other people because we point other people to the bridge and in a way become part of the bridge as we become like the bridge which we will at some time walk across to be with the builder of the bridge forever our kinsman redeemer is the bridge and the love packages that sustain our lives is the word of the father the builder of the bridge and the one who is revealed by the bridge now let's see how scripture says this Genesis 28, verses 10 to 13. Yaakov, or Jacob, left Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he came to a certain place and stayed there that night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed. And behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the messengers or angels of Elohim were ascending and descending on it. And behold, 
Yahuwah stood above it and said, I am Yahuwah, the Elohim of Abraham your father, and the Elohim of Isaac. End of quote. Now, when I received the revelation of Messiah as a bridge, I'm not sure if I was even aware of this scripture, but when we get to the renewed covenant or New Testament, what is being revealed to us in this passage in Genesis is that our Messiah bridged a gap between Yahuwah and his creation, mankind. And we know from scripture that that gap was created by the transgression or breaking of the covenant of the word of Yahuwah in the Garden of Eden. And so Yaakov was given a prophetic dream. In this dream, Yahuwah stood at the head of a ladder or some uh, translations say that it was a staircase. But in either case, whether we see the word ladder or staircase there, what we essentially see is a vertical bridge that reached all the way to heaven with Yahuwah standing at the head. And Yahuwah is using this vertical bridge to send his word by way of his messengers to Yaakov. And so the word of Yahuwah is traveling to earth and his word is returning back to Yahuwah by means of this ladder, which is bridging the gap that was caused by sin. Now, there's much that can be said about this passage of Scripture, but let's start by noting who is talking to Yaakov in the stream. And the last verse there says that it is Yahuwah. And Yahuwah identifies himself, as he does countless other times, as Yahuwah Elohim commonly translated in the King James Version and many other versions as the Lord your God. And what we're not able to see in English is that there is a plurality in the word Elohim or God. However, as we've been discussing in this study, the plurality is an expression and not number. The word Elohim means strong authority. And so Yahuwah is stating to Yaakov or Jacob that Yahuwah is the strong authority who enlists all of his creation, enlisting even his mighty messengers or angels and carrying forth his will, which is at work in the lives of those he calls upon. And this verse specifically, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And now us, as spiritual descendants. And so, as we continue on, what we see is that the latter facilitated two-way communication between Yahuwah our Elohim and mankind. That ladder was a vehicle for the word of Yahuwah. And that communication was absolutely necessary in leading Yaakov or Jacob, who by means of interacting with and being changed by the word of Yahuwah, would then have his name, which in Hebrew, means his character changed so as to become Israel or Yasharal and therefore providing that same spiritual legacy to the descendants of Israel which of course includes us today 
so that we may indeed possess the promised land, which is not simply a piece of land or territory on earth, but the promised land speaks of the soil of our hearts, where the spiritual seed of the word of Yahuwah is sown to the saving of our souls. Yahukanan, or John, 1 verses 49 to 51. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, which means teacher, you are the son of Elohim. You are the king of Israel. Yahusha answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels or messengers of Elohim ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Now, in this verse, we see that Messiah is the bridge. Messiah Yahusha is the fulfillment of Jacob's ladder. Our Messiah, who frequently calls himself Son of Man, as he purposely makes reference to his humanity, is the means by which the word of Yahuwah is restored unto mankind. Because Messiah Yahusha is the provision of Yahuwah Elohim that makes it possible for us to receive those life-sustaining packages of guidance and instruction and correction, building us in our belief and obedience to his word, which guides us to the fulfillment of his great and precious promises. The sinless humanity of the Son of Man was able to make perfect sacrifice for the cleansing of our sin and lawlessness. And the inheritance of the Spirit of Yahuwah was poured out through Messiah Yahusha to us because he was a kinsman redeemer according to the flesh. And according to the Spirit, the promised outpouring of Yahuwah's Spirit. And therefore, he was our kinsman redeemer and the firstborn of creation because he proved himself worthy to dispense the wealth of our Heavenly Father to his family. It is Messiah Yahusha who restored the wealth of fellowship with the Sovereign One, who through no merit of our own is given to us to partake of the divine nature which gives to us an ear to hear, the still small voice of His Word, and a heart to obey His living Word. As He speaks to each of us from the fullness of the counsel of his word. For Yahuwah, through Yahusha, is the wonderful counselor, mighty Elohim, Prince of Shalom, King of Righteousness, making us whole and complete the rule and reign of his word from the throne of our hearts with the gift of of the kingdom. Through Yahusha, the invisible Yahuwah reveals himself to us, and Yahuwah gives to us to know him as Abba, Father, having been born of the Spirit of Yahuwah, which was poured out to us through Messiah Yahusha. And so, like Adam in the Garden of Eden, the bride of Messiah Yahusha was brought forth from his side. And in Hebrews 2.11, Yahusha, 
Yahusha, a son of man, says that he is not ashamed to call us brethren. And because of his position of honor among the brethren, Yahuwah has given Yahusha the position of firstborn, which in scripture is not significant of birth order, but rather significant of role, of responsibility to the family and the dispensing of the family wealth. Hallelujah and amen. Now, we must um, note that in the passage we looked at in Genesis 28, 13, that scripture tells us specifically that Yahuwah was standing at the head of the ladder. And here in John 1, 51, Yahusha identifies himself as the ladder that the messengers were ascending and descending upon. And then 1 Corinthians 11.3 says that the head of Messiah is Elohim, which then completes the picture that we first saw in Genesis with Yahuwah, our Elohim, standing at the head of the ladder. Hallelujah and amen. Now, one more thing about this picture, which is a depiction of the ladder spoken of in Yaakov's dream. This ladder looks very much like DNA, which is significant of the design of mankind. And so when I first looked at this picture, my first thought was how this so illustrated the humanity of Messiah Yahusha, son of man, who would, as, who would as well be revealed as son of Elohim, as he was the word of Elohim made flesh. And as I continue to look at this picture, I was truly troubled in my spirit because I heard in my spirit the thought, ziggurat. And in another study on this channel, the, um, our father gave to me to speak about the fact that the Tower of Babel was a ziggurat, which is a pagan temple uh, with an ascending staircase on the outside of the building. And so for that reason, I almost did not use this picture. But then I began to think about how the enemy, Hasatan, mimics Elohim in his attempts to take the place of Elohim. This is a picture of the Tower of Babel built by Nimrod. And in many ways, the Tower of Babel is um, symbolic of man's attempt at a unified world dominance. And Genesis 11.4, let's read that. And they said, come, let's build ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach into heaven. And let's make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered abroad over the face of all the earth. End of quote. Now, it's important for us to remember that this Tower of Babel occurred after the Great Flood that Yahuwah saved Noah and his family through. And in Genesis 9, 1, um, the Most High, Yahuwah, spoke the commandment to spread into all the earth. Uh, when he said, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth. And so we see that mankind was attempting to build their own kingdom here on earth in defiance to the word of Yahuwah because these ziggurats were religious temples of pagan worship. And I don't know if you're able to see the staircase on the outside of the building 
The staircase, which circled the building, was an essential part of the design. And so we see then a picture of man's attempt at a ladder which reaches to heaven. But at the head of this ladder is the god, little g, of this world, Hasatan. Now we see the Tower of Babel was not a, it, it was not an isolated historical endeavor of mankind because in fact, um, to make it very clear that this is still on the spiritual agenda of fallen mankind and is a confirmation of what time it is on the prophetic clock of Yahuwah as revealed to us in his word. We're seeing modern-day modern ziggurats springing up in various places. And so to the right, we see the European Union headquarters as a government structure. And now let's see what the private sector has plans for. To the right, we see a picture of the plan for a second Amazon headquarter. According to the project, the building is to symbolize the Tower of Babel. And the DNA thread and the Tree of Life. The facility will cost a staggering $2.5 billion. And there will be a, a link to a YouTube video with more details about this project. Now, let's look at the definition of the word ziggurat as provided by an online dictionary. Um, and it says, built in ancient Mesopotamia, a ziggurat is a type of massive stone structure resembling pyramids and featuring terraced levels accessible only by way of the stairways. It traditionally symbolizes a link between the gods and the humankind. Although it also served practically as shelter from floods. Nimrod and the Tower of Babel was after the flood where the Most High flooded the entire earth saving only Noah and his family. And so we know, of course, that there is no mechanism made uh, as the work of man's hands, which will protect man from the wrath of the Almighty. Which brings us back to uh, the central question of our current study, which was taken from Matthew 16, verses 13 to 17, because our Messiah is our ark of safety. And so let's look at that again. Matthew 16, verses 13 to 17. Now, when Yahusha came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Mercer, and others Elijah, and still others uh, Jeremiah, or Yermayahu, or one of the other prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living Elohim. And Yahushua said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. End of quote. And so Messiah was saying that it was a matter of, it was not a matter of human reasoning, but rather it was the Father who said that word revealing the truth to Kepha, or Peter. Now, this passage of scripture has been the focus of our past five 
uh, parts of study and we've weighed our understanding of the meaning of what was being said to us about the revelation of who Messiah Yahushua is by looking at this passage from, from the perspective of other scripture and doing so with Hebrew eyes of understanding as opposed to applying religious traditions that are historically rooted in the paganism of Egyptology uh, and Greek mythology, which promote the idea of more than one person as Elohim through the very same demonic characters, which are the historic uh, historical bases for Christmas and Easter's Easter uh, characters such as Tammuz, who is actually mentioned in Scripture, but we aren't going to spend any time talking about Tammuz, etc., because there's plenty of information readily available on the patterns of demonic entities, which have been repackaged throughout history. The key to understanding the matter of the identity of Yahusha is in remembering that Yahuwah is spirit. And that means that even if the clay vessels are different, that there is one spirit flowing from the Father and revealed in the Son. And the same spirit is then also revealed in us who are called, who are the called out assembly commonly called the church. And the clay vessels are different and serve different purposes, but the spirit is the same. The empowering presence is poured out in different measures to accompany different assignments. And in Messiah Yahusha is the fullness of Yahuwah without measure revealed in bodily form. Which brings us to the next passage in this section of scripture. We will give discussion to a few remaining points of this study, and then we will conclude our study in part seven, where we will give a summary of a few verses that we may not have included in this very important topic. So let's continue. And I also say to you that you are Kephar, or Kepha, Peter, and upon this rock I will build my assembly, and the gates of Sheol will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. And he gave the disciples strict orders that they were to tell no one that he was the Messiah. End of quote. Now, there's much that can be discussed here, but for the sake of our study at hand, let's take a brief look at the first couple of verses. Matthew 16, verses 18 to 20. And I also say to you that you are Kepha, Peter, and upon this rock I will build my assembly, and the gates of Sheol will not overpower it. End of quote. You know, I think that most times when we think of a rock as being something that's forceful, we think of a common natural rock. But I don't believe that, that that is the kind of rock that Messiah was speaking of here. I believe that the kind of rock that, um, when we keep in mind other instances where rocks or stones are used to illustrate a, a characteristic of those who, uh, with whom Yahuwah speaks his word, we can see that Messiah is speaking of a, a rock or a stone that was circumcised so as to uh, reflect the light of his word. 
And that's why he said that he had not spoken his word to the other nations because their hearts had not been cultivated or circumcised to hear his word. 1 Peter 2 verses 4 to 5 You're coming to Messiah, who is the living cornerstone of Elohim's temple. He was rejected by people, but he was chosen by Elohim for great honor. And you are living stones that Elohim is building into his spiritual temple. What's more, you are his holy or set-apart priest through the mediation of Yahusha Messiah you offer spiritual sacrifices that please Elohim end of quote okay so figuratively speaking what makes these stones living stones is the light reflected in them Psalm 119 verse 130 says that the entrance of the word of Yahuwah brings light. And so we are, we as living stones are like the ladder which points to Yahuwah and serves as a vehicle for his word to go forth on the earth. 1 Peter 2 verses 4 to 5. As the scriptures say, I am placing a cornerstone in Yerushalayim, or Jerusalem, chosen for great honor. And anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Yes, you who trust him recognize the honor Elohim has given him. But for those who reject him, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. And he is the stone that makes people stumble, the rock that makes them fall. End of quote. Now, in this passage, we see that Yahuwah is revealing to us that Messiah Yahusha is the chief cornerstone. The revelation of Messiah Yahusha is the first stone set as the foundation for the building of the rest of the structure. And again, we're looking at an instance of a precious stone which is able to provide for the entrance of light. The light being that which gives the stone its brilliance. Messiah Yahusha was honored with being the chosen vessel, honored with the fullness of Yahuwah in bodily form. 1 Peter 2 verses 8 to 9 They stumble because they do not obey Elohim's word. And so they meet the fate that was planned for them. But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy or set-apart nation, Allahim's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of Allahim for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light." End of quote. Revelations 4, verse 3. The one seated there looked like jasper and carnelian, and a rainbow that gleamed like an emerald encircled the throne. End of quote. Now, Jasper and carnelian are stones of identical color, and when we take into consideration other scriptures which speak of the appearance of the one seated on the throne, we see descriptions which say that 
the Most High is an unapproachable light. And here also we see that the rainbow surrounding the throne gleamed and therefore speaks again of light. Psalm 119 verse 105, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. End of quote. And we know of course that the light of the word of Yahuwah is not natural light but rather his word is like packages of the light of truth, which provide guidance. On and on, we see examples through scripture of how the Most High speaks truth to us over and over again, using different examples to explain the same truth. Again and again, we see illustrations that reveal to us that the power of Yahuwah is within. The kingdom of Yahuwah is within. And from the scripture, we know that there is only one source of power. He is the great I Am, but there is no other. Proverbs 4, verse 18. The way of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, which shines ever brighter until the full light of day. End of quote. Now, I know there are some who would say that we should not over-spiritualize scripture, but the imagery is undeniable. The author of scripture is the speaking spirit. And without spiritual eyes of understanding, the book of scripture remains a mystery to the natural mind. It has been said, and it is clearly true, that the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. And so it is, amen. Please join me in giving praise unto our Father for the oil of anointing of his presence, which ministers ever so beautifully through the yielded vessels called acoustical praise in Rio, Brazil. Thank you again for granting permission for the use of your musical creations. A link to their channel will be in the description box below. And I do so encourage you to visit their channel for even more treasure. Adam and the Garden of Eden is the prototype for the flesh. And the last Adam, our Messiah Yahusha, is the prototype for those born again. Hen o shalom mishpaka. Favor unto wholeness, family. Please continue with us to part seven, the concluding part of our study.